Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix a missing or broken logo so that it doesn't happen again, showing you the right way to insert logos in your drawings so you can send them and not worry about those broken XRefs. I'm also going to share a ton of little tips and tricks that are going to help you when working with images in general in AutoCAD, as well as explain how the different options work for you and against you. Let's jump right into today's video. All right, so starting right off, we're gonna fix this issue. And what happens is if you send a drawing or template file, uh, DWG, that has an XREF in it, typically that XREF link or external reference link is going to be broken. AutoCAD by default, when you're inserting images, PDFs, or other drawings are inserted as external references. This is a great way to split up your drawing files and keep things moving fast and streamlined. However, when you're sending important files, you wanna make sure you include all of those XREFs with the files and the zip say that you're sending off to the client. If you don't do that, they're going to be seeing broken links like this one here and this image not showing up. So one thing that I'll show you here to start is how to insert any logos imagery that you need to stay within the drawing. Now this isn't going to be as useful for things like background imagery or images that are part of the actual drawing, but this is great for things in your title block and that kind of stuff, like a logo in particular. So I'm going to delete this broken XREF image here, but later on I'll show you how to fix that link uh, if that is what you're looking to do as well. But the correct or proper way to insert a logo into your drawing is to use the insert object command. So type in insert OBJ and hit enter. It's going to pop up and ask you which object you'd like to insert. So we're going to insert uh, a logo or an image. So we're gonna choose create from file and we're just going to choose browse and then go to where our imagery is. So we're going to go to this pictures CAD and we're gonna insert the Autodesk expert elite member logo. This is Autodesk's group of experts that know the software and contribute to the industry and the community. I'm an expert elite member so we're going to add in my logo and we're going to put it into our drawing. So choosing that file and not checking link. So we don't want a broken link. We want this file to be actually inserted as an object into the drawing where it's going to stay regardless if we send that file away. There are some other cool tricks you can do with insert object, things like inserting Excel and Word documents. But for our case, we're going to do this with a logo. You don't want to check on display as icon. You want the actual image to show up. So hitting OK is going to bring it in here. And then now you simply need to just scale it down to your proper size and place the image as needed. So we're just going to drop this quickly in here. Scale it down. And you can see now I've got that image saved within my drawing. And if we open up the reference window here to see if we have any external references, we only have that old one that was broken and we deleted. So now I can simply detach that. And my image is not a reference, it is actually inside this drawing. So when I save it, we can now send this drawing to any of our clients and that image is always going to stay in it. Now going on or adding on to this, if you've got a title block and a set of layers like this, or like how I teach to set up your template files in my course, AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows, along with a ton of other things, which you should check out by clicking that link up above or down below to get a discount for yourself and learn everything from creating a template file just like this, how to create title blocks, as well as import layers, XRefs and images, set up your layouts and viewports and sheets, as well as package and send out drawings the proper way. All of that is included in the course. And again, it's available at that link down below. Now, moving on, say you already have your template file, or if you don't, what you'll want to do is open up that DWT and insert your logo directly into your template file and then save it again as that DWT that you can now start all of your new drawings from. You'll need to do this 
method or process just once then and now every new drawing you set up is going to have your logo automatically embedded in it so that it's always there and it always shows up for everybody that you send your drawing to. Now to do that you can simply do a save as once you've set your drawing up the way you'd like it with nothing else in the drawing but your title block, your layouts, your layers, blocks, styles, all of that. Type in save as, go to the drop down here and simply choose drawing template. You're going to be able to save it in the template folder, give it a name, and now you've got a drawing template that you can start from every time you start a new project or a new drawing. All right, so now that you've got your logo fixed, I'm going to show you a few more sweet tricks when it comes to inserting images and working with images in AutoCAD. So let's jump over to model space here. So we're going to type in model and hit enter. And now that we're in model space, I'm going to show you that you can actually insert or attach images really quickly by simply dragging and dropping them. Many people don't know this, but you can actually simply open up a folder with an image, drag it and drop it into AutoCAD. This automatically attaches it as an external reference or an XREF, and now you can simply place it and hit enter and enter again for scale and rotation. Now this is always going to be uh, at the wrong scale when you bring it into a drawing so you're going to want to scale it based on a few known points i showed this in a previous digitization video which you should check out i'll put that link down below when you want to scale based on known measurements for say manhole details or uh, structural details of that sort but if you're working for say aerial imagery another way you could do it is use the align command choose two different points so we're going to type in align select our object and hit enter and it asks you for a source point so this is going to be the first point on the image so say you know the coordinates of the corner of this tennis court over here or maybe the corner of this building if you've got some survey points or you can even go to google earth and get these coordinates uh, simply selecting it and then typing in your destination coordinate uh, we're just going to click right here but what you would want to do is type in the coordinate so the x and the y coordinate in utm and then your second point so say that's this one over here or maybe you've got the coordinate of the center of this roundabout click it and then give it the second destination point so you can choose where that's going to be or you can just hit enter again to keep it the same we're just going to keep it right there and that's going to ask for a third point but using those two points is going to now align and scale that image when you hit enter. So that's a super simple and easy way to bring images in. Simply drag and drop them into your model space. Type in align to activate the align command. Choose the first point that you know a location of and then give it the destination and then the second point and a coordinate that you know the distance for. Now, once you've got your image in your drawing, I'm going to show you a few tricks you can use to modify it to your liking. Now, the first thing is adding a clipping boundary or image clip will allow you to clip out or reduce what's visible from your image. Now, this can be super useful if, say, your uh, image is a detail or another drawing sheet and you only want to show a piece of it or maybe it's aerial imagery like this one and you're merging multiple pieces together and you just want to trim out which one is showing where. Uh, selecting an image, click create clipping boundary and then you can choose to start a polyline, choose a polygonal one or rectangle or invert. So we're going to choose a polygon and we're going to simply start drawing. Now you can see here that it's showing me the clipping boundary I'm creating. In some cases you may want to clip this to like a property boundary or a city boundary or like I said if you're merging multiple pieces of imagery together you might want to just have it uh, clip on a specific line but in our case I've just drawn an irregular shape here and you can always move these at any point to adjust what's being shown on the image. This is super useful. You can also, moving on here, select an image and adjust how that image is displayed. So if you want your image to be in the background or as kind of a reference, so you might want it like faded or 
dimmed down, you can use these settings in the top left here instead of messing around with transparencies in the properties or layers. You can simply pull the fader bar here to the right and fade out the image so that any line work and objects above it are going to be much more visible when printed. This is going to print as like a faded out gray kind of old photograph, but it's going to be great to be able to place the objects in a real space but not overwhelm or take over from the line work. Similarly, you can adjust the contrast here and brightness to your liking. This is a great way to kind of dial in as well as merge and mesh multiple photographs that might be taken at different times of day. So you need to tweak those a little bit. It gives you some of those kind of really basic Photoshop options within AutoCAD. So that's all for today's video. I just wanted to share a handful of super helpful image tips and tricks. So from the start, we learned about the insert object command, which can be used for a ton of different types of objects that you might want to insert directly into your drawings. That was the insert OBJ command. Next, we checked out the image attach command, or you can simply drag and drop your image to activate that command and place an image within your drawing as a reference or background image. Once it's set in your drawing, you'll want to use that align command to scale or reference the size of the image. Again, you can check out my digitization video a couple videos back to use that a little bit more specifically for scaling an image to an exact measurement or distance. And then after that, we checked out the image clip. So that's I-M-A-G-E. CLIP, the image clip command, to clip our image down to an irregular shape. And then after that, we used the fade and brightness settings in the top left adjust panel of the image to tweak how it looks for our drawing. If these are helpful or if you'd like to learn more about AutoCAD, don't forget to check out my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course down below at that link. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for new videos every week. And thanks for watching. Cheers.